Shalom. We are continuing our journey through Psalms with Psalm 10. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof, heedless in times of trouble? The wicked in his arrogance hounds the lowly. May they be caught in the schemes they devise. The wicked crows about his unbridled lusts. The grasping man reviles and scorns the Lord. The wicked, arrogant as he is, in all his scheming thinks, he does not call to account, God does not care. His ways prosper at all times, your judgments are far beyond him. He snorts at all his foes. He thinks, I shall not be shaken through all time, never be in trouble. His mouth is full of oaths, deceit, and fraud. Mischief and evil are under his tongue. He lurks in outlying places. From a covert he slays the innocent. His eyes spy out the hapless. He waits in a covert like a lion in his lair, waits to seize the lowly. He seizes the lowly as he pulls his net shut. He stoops, he crouches, and the hapless fall prey to his might. He thinks, God is not mindful. He hides his face. He never looks. Rise, O Lord. Strike at him, O God. Do not forget the lowly. Why should the wicked man scorn God, thinking you do not call to account? You do look. You take note of mischief and vexation. To requite is in your power. To you the hapless can entrust himself. You have ever been the orphan's help. Oh, break the power of the wicked and evil man, so that when you look for his wickedness, you will find it no more. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You will listen to the entreaty of the lowly, O Lord. You will make their hearts firm. You will incline your ear to champion the orphan and the downtrodden, that men who are of the earth tyrannize no more. Once again, the psalmist identifies with the lowly, with those who are pursued and persecuted. The psalmist identifies with those who are forgotten. He specifies near the end of the psalm, the orphan and the downtrodden. And even though he himself may not be one of those, he often feels as if he is downtrodden because of the actions of his enemies and of those whom he considers to be evil, arrogant, and wicked men. It appears that the psalmist is contradicting himself. He starts off by asking, Why do you, O Lord, stand aloof, heedless in times of trouble? And then he goes on to point out that also the wicked and arrogant, namely his enemies, feel the same about God in the sense that God is not paying attention uh, to their actions, that God is somehow heedless and not mindful of what they are doing. So the evil, the enemies, the wicked and arrogant, uh, what they do is they kind of hide underground. They, in a way, try to imagine that they are getting away with all sorts of terrible misdeeds, thinking that God is paying no attention to what they are doing. The images of the lion in his lair, waiting to seize the lowly or the powerless. The images of one who lurks in outlying places so that he can slay the innocent. Always somehow seeking out those who are lacking in power so that he can do damage, so that he can harm others and wreak havoc and destruction. But then the psalmist 
shifts stream quite abruptly in the middle of the psalm and says, You do look. You take note of mischief and vexation. To requite is in your power. So at the beginning of the psalm, the writer is lamenting the idea that God is not paying attention, that God is somehow hiding his face, heedless in time of trouble. But now in the middle of the psalm, after going through all this about the wicked and the evil who hide and lay in wait to do destruction and damage, all of a sudden the psalmist changes his thinking, it, it appears, and says, wait a minute, maybe, maybe God really is paying attention. Maybe God really is noticing what is going on. Is it possible that the psalmist changes his mind? Is it possible that at the beginning he is somehow identifying in a way with those who are doing evil and mischief, those who are wicked who imagine that God is not paying attention? And the psalmist has has kind of bought into that, that faulty kind of thinking, imagining that God is somehow asleep at the wheel, not taking notice, so that people can get away with anything, imagining that God will do nothing to requite them of their evil. But then the psalmist thinks twice about this. Perhaps in a moment of clarity, of clear thinking, the psalmist says to himself, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm so caught up in my anxiety and despair and my fear of those who are evil and my sense that wickedness does prevail and that the wicked people prosper in this life and in this world. Maybe I'm so caught up in that that I've convinced myself of something that really is not true. Just like they think that God isn't paying attention and they can get away with what they want, I have somehow allowed myself to be infected by that, that faulty thinking and that lack of faith. And so the psalmist shifts midstream and says, wait a minute, you know what? God really does let look. God pays attention. God is mindful of what goes on in this earth and in the universe. God is Melech Olam Va'ed, King forever and ever. God listens to the entreaty of the lowly. God makes their hearts firm. God inclines God's ear to champion the orphan and the downtrodden. Just because bad things happen in this life and just because, for instance, such as in today's world, uh, a pandemic like COVID-19 can take hold and seize so much of the earth and demand so much of our attention and make so many people sick and take so many lives. But just because this happens doesn't mean that God is asleep at the wheel. God still cares for all of us. God cares for the sick and the suffering who are out there. The psalmist prays that God will give all of them and all of us strength during times of evil and darkness and despair. Just because God does not somehow miraculously intervene by bringing the immediate cure or the immediate vaccine and make everything somehow miraculously better, it doesn't mean that God isn't there and that God is not mindful of our needs. We cannot understand God's ways. We cannot manipulate God and somehow make God do what we would want God to do for us. But what we can do is draw strength and comfort from God's healing power and go forward each day knowing that God is not asleep, that God is not taking a break, but somehow God's presence is there for us in our lives. Thank you.